4% of a building in Times Square must be covered with advertisement. And if you look back there, you see Cover Color's advertisement? They have had that spot for 90 years. 1920, they ended up getting it. Now, if you take a look in front here, you'll see the building with the Budweiser, Toshiba TV. Look on the roof, you'll notice it has a sign that says 2010 and the crystal ball up there. That's the building where they dropped the ball since 1941. This whole tradition starts in 1903, going into the year of 1904. That's because they were changing this area's name from Long Acre Square to Times Square. The reason why we call it Times Square, because we have a newspaper that's called the New York Times. They were invited to move their headquarters from Lower Manhattan into Midtown Manhattan. If they were to make the move, they would change this area's name for them. So what they did was a fireworks display. They did that for the next four years. Then in 1908, that's when they dropped the ball for the first time. Now over one million people each year will be standing right here in Times Square to watch the ball come down this building. Over two million people was the largest crowd back in 1999 into 2000, what was supposed to be the millennium year. Now, when we get to the next slide, by the way, to your right, you're gonna see 42nd Street. It's called today New 42nd Street. That's because Giuliani, during his tenure, what he did is he made it a family-friendly environment. Before his tenure, that street was the complete opposite of being a family-friendly <laughs> environment. But here's what he did. He brought Walt Disney, and all these other companies started to follow. So you'll have new theaters, hotels, restaurants, and we cannot leave this out, Starbucks coffee. All right, now the McDonald's is one of the largest in the world, and if you eat there and you're lucky, you will be escorted by ushers to your seats. Now one street down, you have Port Authority bus terminal also. This is our next stop, New 42nd Street and Port Authority bus terminal. Port Authority is the largest bus terminal in the country, seven to 8,000 buses each day go in there, 200,000 people a day go in there, and if you want to catch a bus here in New York City, at Port Authority, and you'll end up in Alaska if you wish. <laughs> now, right is our next stop. Give me one second. JJ, don't open the door yet. I don't know if you're aware of it, in about three weeks, March 9th, Barbie's turning 51 years old. Now. When we get up front here, on your left at the entrance of the park, there's a statue there of a guy called General Stewart. He's the guy that bought the state of Alaska. He got criticized for it, but it turned out to be good. Now, the thing is, is that that statue, if you take a close look at it, here's the thing. They were making the head. They ran out of money. So legend has it, they had so many Abraham Lincoln statues out there, they brought one over, cut Lincoln's head off, put General Stewart's head on top to finish it all off. I'll tell you two things about General Stewart. He wasn't tall, he wasn't thin. Now right here's our next stop, by the way. This is our stop, 23rd Street for Daddy, Flat Iron Dish Stop. To your right, Chelsea. To your left, Gramercy. Anybody getting off at this stop here? What's this? No. in the early 1600s. Little by little, the city starts to grow north. Right back there, 23rd Street, when that park in the 1840s gets laid out, becomes the northernest portion of New York City. 59th Street, 1850s, is the northernest portion of New York City, because that's when they begin to lay out Central Park. So New York City's entire history, that attains a passenger elevator. In the 1850s, they installed into this building, what is called the Otis Elevator. We'll take a look at most buildings, they still call them Otis. Now, when we get to the next street, that will be Grand Street. To the left, about four streets over, is a street called Mulberry Street. 
That's where you're going to find Little Italy. Little Italy today is only one street in the Lower East Side of Manhattan. Here's why. There's no more Italians. They have all left. The only reason we call that street Little Italy because there's a couple of restaurants sitting there. You go one street over to Mott Street, here's where you're going to end up. The largest Chinatown and population outside of China today. Over 150,000 residents, primarily in the Canton region of China, right now live in the Lower East Side of Manhattan. This is the oldest Chinatown in this country, and it's not the only Chinatown in New York City, because we got two big Chinatowns, one in Brooklyn, one in Queens. Now, coming up shortly, we're gonna cross a street called Canal Street. Canal Street is the street where you will find everything that's 100% not real. If you're gonna shop on this street, you better bargain. Do not pay for the first price they offer. If you're looking for something specific, you ask if they don't have it in store. It doesn't mean they don't have it. Just means that city officials cannot be looking at everything they sell down here. That's why some of these stores have walls that can flip around or slide over so you can go in and get what you're really looking for. For example, on the right coming up, on the second floor over here on one window, it says nail salon. Trust me, I have never seen anybody walk out of there with their nails done yet. Now, when we cross the light, we're going to make our way across to our next stop. We're going to ask you a little Chinatown. Neighbor to your right, Tribeca, Triangle, below Canal Street. The king of Tribeca. His name is Robert De Niro. He's the guy that transformed that entire area, basically. He's got buildings. He's got restaurants there. And in 2002, because of the collapse of the Twin Towers to help the economy of Lower Manhattan, Here's what he did. With the lady called Jane Rosenthal, they decided to start a film festival that has become one of the biggest ones around the world today, called the Tribeca Film Festival. Now, that film festival is held during the last week of April or the first week of May, or it goes in between the those two weeks. 